po ng Diyos. Maraming salamat po sa buhay at lakas na aming tagnay. Sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon, maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabay ko po ang bawat isa sa akin. Ano man ang bahagi na aming gagampanan, naway maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw na ito. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming paggawa, ikaw po ang aming makasala. Amen. It's another day of fun-filled and enjoyable learning, my dear grade 7 learners. For today's lesson, I am your Muppet teacher, Mom Michelle L. Carmen. Let us join together to unfold another set of exciting and marvelous world of sports, fitness, and wellness. Welcome to Muppet's Web, your deep way to total wellness and lifelong fitness. Join me in our online school here in Valenzuela Facebook Live. For the learners who are with me today, kindly key in your name, school, grade, and section on the comment box. Stay with me until our session in physical education about dual sports ends. Participate actively in different activities and earn your sports, fitness, and wellness badge. Before we begin, here are some gentle reminders that you need to follow during live streaming. Be prepared! Get ready with your MAPIA self-learning module, notebook, and book so you can answer directly and take down notes of important information. Sit properly and keep a good posture while watching. See to it that you are situated in the best area in your home that is conducive for your home. Avoid unnecessary comments like emojis or stickers that are not related to the discussion and activities. Be respectful, do not use unpleasant words in answering, asking questions, and expressing your thoughts. Be mindful of the anti-cyberbullying law. Be attentive. Participation in the activity and discussion is highly encouraged. I hope everyone will be guided by these reminders to ensure orderliness during Valenzuela live stream. These are the competencies that you are about to learn in today's lesson. You are expected to describe the nature and background of the sports. Execute the skills involved in the sports. First, let us recall the lesson that we have learned during physical education lesson 1, which is dual sports, and that is about table tennis. We will be having an activity called Stepping Glass Stone, inspired by the movie Squid Game. You can avoid to break the stepping glass by choosing the correct answer. You have 5 seconds to type the letter of your answer on the comment box. Be careful! A sport known as ping pong and has similar principles to lawn tennis. A. Badminton B. Lawn tennis C. Table tennis The timer starts now. Kindly comment your answer. If you answered letter C, table tennis, you are correct. The governing body of the sport table tennis, A, ATTF, B, IATF, or C, ITTF. What will be the answer? Yes, it's letter C, ITTF or International Table Tennis Federation. Basic skill in table tennis, which is important because it controls the angle of the racket. A. Grip B. Receive C. Serve Very nice! You got it right! It's letter A. Grip An equipment that is placed at the center, dividing the table into two equal halves. A ball, B net, C rocket. You're doing great! It's letter B, net. 
when two opponent players scored equal? A. Juice B. Match C. Points The correct answer is A. Juice Very nice! Do you get a perfect score? Wow! That's awesome! It only shows that you have learned a lot in the previous lesson. Congratulations! You have earned your first sports fitness and wellness badge. For the last two months, as we enjoy the ease of restrictions following the decision of interagency task force on the management of emerging infectious diseases or IATF EID to escalate the national capital region to alert level 2, usual individual non-contact exercise, sport and recreation activities can be undertaken at a maximum of 50% indoor venue and 70% outdoor venue capacity as long as health safety measures are observed. But with the surge of COVID cases because of a new variant of COVID-19 virus Omicron, most areas in our country went back again to alert level 3. More so, this does not mean that we will not be mindful of getting involved in physical activities like sports. If we're going to look back 21 months ago because of the COVID-19 pandemic, an enhanced community quarantine was imposed that results to sedentary lifestyle among many people of all ages. Now is a great time to get involved in different kinds of sports to enjoy its health benefits of contributing to our physical, mental, emotional, and social well-being. But of course, contact sports are not allowed as of this moment. There are many sports available in the world nowadays and they are categorized as individual sport, dual sport, and team sport. What kind of sports are you involved in right now? What keeps you going? For you to become familiar with more serious sports participation and be physically active, let us talk about two kinds of racket sports, namely badminton and lawn tennis that can be played individually or with a partner. You can also monitor your physical fitness level by participating in dual sports. To begin with, let us talk about badminton. Badminton is played using strong rackets and a feathered shuttlecock on a marked rectangular court. Although, games normally take place in a draft, free indoor environment. Badminton is played as a singles or doubles game with one or two players on a side. The object of the game is to hit the shuttlecock or bird back and forth with a rocket across the net 5 feet high at its center. The bird should be hit with such speed and accuracy that the opponent is unable to return the shot successfully. The game can either be fast or slow paced depending on the skill level of the players. In the 5th century BC, the people in China then played a game called TVNC. A direct translation from this world, TVNC is kicking the shot. This is a game where you use bottle door or a paddle to hit the shuttle back, back and forth. By the 16th century, it had become a popular game among children in England. In Europe, this game was known as Jules de Volang to them. In the 1860s, a game called Tuna was played in India. This game is much like the battle door and shuttle cup with an added name. Badminton World Federation or WBF is the highest governing body of badminton sport. It is the international governing body for the sport of badminton recognized by the International Olympic Committee or IOC. On the other hand, Let's discuss the brief history of another racket sport, lone tennis. The modern game of tennis traces back to a medieval game called Jeu de Pomme, Game of the Hand, which began in 12th century in France. It was initially played with a palm of the hand. It was not until the 16th century that rackets came into use, and the game began to be called tennis. 
It was popular in England and France, and Henry VIII of England was a big fan of the game and was a notable and avid player. It was also enjoyed among commoners and monks and now referred to as real tennis. In 1873, Major Walter Wingfield invented a version of real tennis that can be played outdoors on a low. The game called is Paris Tap. It is an ancient Greek meaning the art of playing ball. The term originally given to lawn tennis by Walter Clopton Wingfield and first introduced it to Wales and the United Kingdom. Played on our glass courts and manor house lawns by rich English people. This is really where today's tennis developed. The first amateur championship was played on the courts of the Global English Tennis and Cricket Club Wimbledon's Men's Championship in 1877 and Women's Championship in 1884. In 1900 was the first lone tennis team championship called Baby's Cup, an annual competition between men's national teams and it attracted great attention of the international tennis community. February 9, 1900 is the day when Davis Cup Trophy was born. In 1963, the similar women's championship was played called the Fed Cup to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the founding of the International Tennis Federation, also known as the ITF. Both of those championships helped to enhance the prestige of lone tennis. The International Tennis Federation, or ITF, is the governing body of the world tennis, wheelchair tennis, and beach tennis. It was founded in 1913 as the International Lawn Tennis Federation by 12 National Tennis Association as of 2016. There are 211 national and 6 regional associations that make up ITF's membership. The ITF's governance responsibilities include maintaining and enforcing the rules of tennis, regulating international team competitions, promoting the game, and preserving the sport's integrity via anti-doping and anti-corruption programs. The ITF partners with the Women's Tennis Association or W2A and the Association of Tennis Professionals or ATP to govern professional tennis. The modern game of tennis originated in Birmingham, England in the late 19th century as Lone Tennis. It had close connections both to various fields lone games such as crochet and balls as well as to older racket sport of real tennis. The racket sport traditionally named Lone Tennis, now commonly known simply as tennis, is a direct descendant of what is now denoted real tennis or royal tennis, which is continues to be played today as a separate sport with more complex rules. Now, how do we play this kind of sports? Of course, we make use of different sports equipment and for the badminton we have shuttlecock, also known as a shuttle, a bird or a birdie. It is the ball that is used in the game of badminton. Badminton racket, a sports implement usually consisting of a handle and an oval frame with a tightly interlaced network strings used to strike a ball or a shuttle cap. Badminton net is the central gameplay element in a game of badminton, requiring players to return the shuttle cap from one side of the court to the other during the match. Variations of badminton nets come in polyethylene, nylon, and vinyl. Badminton nets span the entire 20 feet or 6.1 meter width of the court and are placed over the double sidelines even when single games are played. The net has a height of 5 feet and 1 inch or 1.55 meter at the edges and sags is light at the center resulting in a height of 5 feet or 1.55. 52 meter. For the long tennis, we need tennis ball. It's a ball designed for the sport of tennis. Tennis balls are fluorescent yellow in organized competitions, but in recreational play can be virtually any color. Tennis ball co 
covered in a fibrous felt which modifies their aerodynamic properties and each has a white curvilinear oval covering it. Tennis Rocket A bat with a long handle attached to an oval frame with a network of tight strings over it, used to heat the ball in tents. And Tennis Net Interlace fabric poured and taped stretch across the entire width of the court. It is held up by the post. Now that you know what are the equipment to use in badminton and in long tennis, these racket sports are played on these facilities. Badminton courts are the rectangular surfaces used for the racket sport of badminton, divided in half by a center badminton net. Courts are usually marked for both singles or doubles games with boundary widths varying between the two match types. The court on which badminton is played. The parts of court in badminton are the following. The net line, the badminton net, short service line, center line, side line for singles play, back boundary line, and long service line for singles, and long service line for doubles. Next is the long tennis court. A tennis court is the venue where the sport of tennis is played. It is a firm rectangular surface with a low net stretch across the center. The same surface can be used to play both doubles and singles matches. There are four main types of surface for tennis courts. Grass, clay, hard and artificial grass. Grass courts. Grass is the traditional long tennis surface and famously the signature courts of Wimbledon. Clay courts. Clay courts are made of crushed shale, stone, or brick, and hard courts and artificial grass. The parts of a tennis court are baseline, in which they start each point just behind the baseline, whether you're serving or awaiting your opponent, opponent serve. Single sideline, double sideline, net, center service line, service box, service line, and doubles trampoline. Alright, after knowing the equipment that you need and where to play these racket sports, here are the skills that you need to efficiently and effectively play the sports. First, we have the basic skills in badminton. Service. It is the shot that starts a play or rally. The forehand serve and the backhand serve. A correct service is when a player hits the shuttlecock with a racket over the net to the opponent's side without the shuttle getting stuck in the net or exceeding the boundaries of the badminton court with some part of your feet in contact with the court surface. Forehand stroke A return made with the palm of the hand facing the direction of the stroke. It is the shot made by a player by swinging the racket across their body with a palm moving fist. For the right-handed player, the forehand hand is considered the stroke that starts on the right side of their body and vice versa for a left-handed person. Backhand stroke. Hitting the shuttle with your racket while the back of your hand is facing the shuttle. For the right-handed player, the backhand is considered the stroke that starts on the left side of their body and right for the left-handed person. Clear. It is a shutdown with a stroke above the head and shuttle travel, targeting the long service line. Next is love. It is a shutdown with a stroke below the head above waist level and the shuttle traveling up. Drop. Shot usually down with a stroke above the head and the shuttle traveling up but dropping just near the neck. Net shot or drop shot, usually done with a stroke below the head and the shuttle traveling just barely touching the net and landing mid. Next is a smash, the powerful attack. The badminton smash is mainly used for attacking and it often acts as winning shot in any badminton rallies. Basically, a smash is an offensive shot fired from a high point and troubles 
down steeply towards your opponent. The smash shot is hit with power and speed downward into the opponent's court. The angle and the stiffness of the shuttlecock's trajectory make it hard for the opponent to retrieve and retrieve. And last but not the least is drive. It is a shot usually done with a stroke about the level of the head and the shuttle traveling straight or flat over the neck. Next is the basic skills in lawn tennis. The first one is volley. It is a shot in tennis where a player returns the ball before it bounces and players typically perform volleys at the service line or closer to the net. The second one is ground stroke. It is a forehand or backhand stroke that is hit after the ball has bounced once on the court. It is one of the core fundamental shots in tennis and is normally played from the back of the court during a baseline rally. If the ball is hit in the air before bouncing, it's a volley. That is a drive, volley, or smash. The next one is love. It involves hitting the ball high and deep into the opponent's court. It can be used as an offensive or defensive tactic. The fourth one is drop. The drop shot can be a little shot if hit correctly and at the right time. The shot is when you hit a ball over the net and plants the opponent's score so short over the net and the opponent should not be able to get where the ball bounces twice. And last but not the least, the fifth one is smash. It is a shot that is hit above the hitter's head with a serve-like motion. A smash can usually be hit with a high amount of force and is often a shot that ends the point. There we have it, my dear learners, the different basic skills in badminton and in loan tennis. At this juncture, you must stand up for our next activity, Sports Mimetics. We are going to execute the skills and footwork in racket sports. If you have a racket at home, you can use that. But if there's none, it's okay. Be sure that you can move freely or you can minimize your movements if you have a small space at home. Are you ready? That's great! Let's have fun!
You are now ready to play racket sports to be fit and healthy. With that, here's your second sports fitness and wellness badge. But wait, there's more. Here are some terminologies that you have to be familiarized with. In badminton, we have Number 1, a match. This consists of the best of 3 games of 21 points. Every time there is a serve, there is a point score. The side winning a rally adds a point to its score. At 20, all the side which gain a 2 point lead first wins the game. At 29, all the side scoring the 30th point wins the game. Next, point. The first side of 21 points wins the game. A point is scored on every serve and awarded to whichever side wins the rally. Next, a rally. In badminton is defined. Next, a rally. In badminton is defined as a single instance of when the shuttlecock is in play to when it is no longer in play effectively. This means a rally starts when the player serves and ends when the shuttlecock lands on the ground or a fault is called. You can think of it as a single point that is played in a match. And number four is juice. During a general game of 21 points, when both players have reached 20 20, it is termed as juice. This means that either one side must lead by two points to win the game. And for lone tennis, we have the advantage set. The set won by a player or team having won at least six games with a two-game advantage over the opponent as opposed to a tie-break format. And for all, it is used by the chair umpire to announce the scores when both players have the same number of points or the same number of games. This means that there is no tie-break game played at 6-6. Six, six. The set continues until one player or team wins by two games. The next one is tie-break set. A tie-break set is played with the same rules as the advantage set, except that when the score is tied 6-6, six, six, a tie-break game or tie-breaker is played. Typically, the tie-break game continues until one side has won 7 points with a margin of 2 or more points. If the tie break score gets 6-6, six, six, then whichever player to win the best of two points wins the set. The third one is match. A tennis match is composed of points, games, and sets. A match is won when a player or doubles team has won the majority of the prescribed number of sets. Matches employ either a best of three, first to two sets, Wits are best of five. First two, three sets wits for the set format. The best of five set format is usually only used in the men's singles or doubles matches at Grand Slam and Davis Cup matches. The next one is point. A point in tennis is the smallest subdivision of the match, the completion of which changes the score. Tennis is played in points. Four points, win a game. Six games, win a set. And two or three sets, win a match. You can decide how long you want your game to be, but most matches are played as best of three or five set contests. Each tennis match is made of two to three sets. To win a set, you must win at least six games. The games are scored starting at love or zero and go up to 40 but that's actually just four points from love the first point is 50 then 30 then 40 then game point which wins the game as you can see love equals 0 15 equals 1 point 30 equals 2 points and 40 equals 3 points and last but not the least zeus in tennis, juice refers to a tie score of 40, where either player needs to win by two points in a row for the game to conclude. When the score becomes tied 15 or 30, the score is announced as 15 all or 30 all. However, tennis reserves the word juice for a tie of 40. 
There you have it, my dear learners. You are now well informed about these two racket sports. Let us check if you really listen to what we have discussed. It's time to earn your last sports wellness and fitness badge. Let's have an activity called Memory Blocks. Each colored square corresponds to picture or words related to racket sports. All you have to do is to comment the numbers that match with each other. For example, 5 and 8. You have 20 seconds to comment your answer. Are you ready? Let's begin! Number one is badminton ball. It matches with number seven, shuttlecock. Did you get it right? Very good. Next is number two, a score of 2020. It's a perfect match for number five, juice. You're doing great, my dear learners. For number 3, drop. The correct match is number number 6. The ball lands so short over the net. That's awesome. You got it right. And for number 4, it's International Tennis Federation. And number 8 the governing body of world tennis. Did you get all the answers correct? Congratulations, mga ka-sports wellness! You really listened very well in today's lesson. You just earned your third and final sports fitness and wellness badge. We are in this together. Every one of us, as well as in the sport community, is filled Feeling the impact of COVID-19. Events and competitive seasons at all sport levels are being cancelled and training facilities are closing. In the midst of current global crisis, it is normal to feel like you are on an emotional roller coaster which is physically and emotionally good. Exercise is medicine. Exercise helps to manage stress, fight off illnesses, and maintain positive mental health. While you may not be able to go to the gym to train or work out, there are other creative alternatives to help you stay physically active while social distancing. You can opt to play racket sports within your home with your loved ones. Now more than ever, it is important to pay attention to your physical health, mental health, as well as emotional health. Extend compassion to others at a safe distance and work to create some semblance of normalcy in your day-to-day -day life. Establish a daily routine. We have distant control over decisions we make about how we start and end our days, as well as items we prioritize daily or weekly. Solidifying morning and evening routines, getting enough sleep, and deliberately incorporating other acts of self-care like journaling, engaging in personal habits, physic being physically active, and eating nutritious foods into our lives helps to partially reestablish feelings of control and comfort while supporting our health and well-being. Every day is another chance to get stronger, to eat better, to live healthier, and be the best version of you. That concludes our lesson in Dual Sports. Again, I am Sports, Fitness, and Wellness Buddy, Teacher Michelle L. Khan. See you again next time. Always stay safe, everyone. God bless. Have a good day. Good morning, learners! 
Welcome back to Valenzuela Live. And here, I am again, your nurse, Antoinette. Are you ready to be healthy? Then let's get it on. But before anything else, let me give you some important reminders to observe during our online class. Now, I am sure that you are all ready for today's discussion. For today's lesson, here are the most essential learning competencies. Number one, describe the characteristics, signs, and symptoms of malnutrition and micronutrient deficiencies. Two, Discusses ways of preventing and controlling malnutrition and micronutrient deficiencies. Three, explains the characteristics, signs, and symptoms of eating disorders. Four, discusses ways of preventing and controlling eating disorders. And five, applies decision-making and critical thinking skills to prevent nutritional problems of adolescents. But first, let's have a short activity. Let's call this activity, Guess the Ula. I will be showing the ingredients, and you have five seconds to guess the name of that dish. Just comment your answer below. For ingredients number one, five seconds starts now. And the answer is, Fuck bet, you got it right. For the ingredients number two. And the answer is, sinigang na baboy. Good job. And for the ingredients number three. And the answer is, menudo. Good job, guys. How many of you got the correct answer? Good job, learners. I guess all of us get hungry to this activity. Let's now go on to our first topic, which is malnutrition. It is lack of proper nutrition caused by not having enough to eat, not eating enough, or being unable to use the food that one does eat. Malnutrition occurs in people who are either undernourished or overnourished. Malnutrition affects billions of people worldwide. Some populations have a high risk of developing certain types of malnutrition depending on their environment, lifestyle, and resources. It is a condition that develops when the body is deprived of vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients. There are two major types of malnutrition. First, we have the protein energy malnutrition, and second is the micronutrient deficiency. Let's talk about the protein energy malnutrition. Under this, we also have the undernutrition and overnutrition. Undernutrition is a condition wherein a person does not eat or take the daily nutrients and nutritional requirements. This may lead to diseases and deficiencies. They are also called stunted, which means impaired growth and development that children experience from poor nutrition, repeated infection, and inadequate psychosocial stimulation. While overnutrition happens when a person eats and gets nutritional requirements beyond the needed and ideal amount. We also call it obesity, 
It is a condition in which a person has too much body fat. It occurs when people eat more food than the body requires. The problem with excess body fat is that it leads to the development of other medical complications and problems. It prevents the body from using the blood sugar correctly, which may lead to the development of diabetes. Excess fat circulating in the bloodstream can block arteries, causing blood clots to form as the blood circulation slows at the blockage, the same way the water slows and pulls at a dam. So the clots can break free and cause heart attacks and strokes. And now, here are the signs and symptoms of protein energy malnutrition. Lack of appetite or interest in food or drink. Tiredness and irritability. Inability to concentrate. Always feeling cold. Depression. Loss of fat, muscle mass, and body tissue. Higher risk of getting sick and taking longer to heal. Longer healing time for wounds. Higher risk of complications after surgery. Eventually, a person may also experience difficulty breathing and heart failure. And in children, there may be a lack of growth and low body weight. Tiredness and lack of energy. Irritability and anxiety. Slow behavioral and intellectual development possibly resulting in learning difficulties. Let's now see the controlling and preventing ways of protein energy malnutrition. Eat healthy and balanced diet. Eat plenty of fruits and vegetables. Add plenty of starchy foods like breads, potatoes, and pastas. Drink some milk. Have some balanced protein such as meat, fish, eggs, and beans. And drink 8 to 10 glasses of water every day. Let's now proceed to micronutrient deficiency. Lack or shortage in the recommended amount or intake of vitamins and minerals. Let's identify first the micronutrients. Micronutrients are vitamins and minerals that all humans need to maintain strong bodies, mental sharpness, and fight off diseases. They are needed by the body only in reasonable amounts. And these are the examples of micronutrients. For vitamin A or retinol, these are the foods rich in vitamin A. It helps the body to use carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Number two, the vitamin B12 or cyanocobalamin. These are the foods rich in vitamin B12. It helps maintain the nerve cells. Number three is the vitamin E or the alpha tocopherol. These are the foods rich in vitamin E. These are antioxidants needed for the stabilization of cell membrane. We also have the number four, the vitamin C or the ascorbic acid. These are the foods rich in vitamin C. It aids in maintenance of red blood cells, aids in bone, teeth, and skin formation, and resistance to infection. We also have the number five, folate. These are the folate-rich foods. They aid in formation of red blood cells and protein. Number six is iron. These are the iron-rich foods. They help in energy metabolism, and they are important for transporting oxygen in the bloodstream and the prevention of anemia. We also have calcium. These calcium-rich foods help to build and maintain bones and teeth, nerve and muscle function, and blood clotting. They also help carry out body processes. We also have the zinc. These foods rich in zinc plays a role in immune function, protein synthesis, and wound healing. Let us now discuss the different micronutrient deficiency, their signs and symptoms, and prevention. The micronutrient deficiencies are diseases caused by deficiency of vitamins or minerals in the diet. 
Let's now have the vitamin A deficiency. It can cause night blindness or the seropthalmia and later on permanent blindness. It affects children but the effect lasts a lifetime. The signs and symptoms of vitamin A deficiency are anemia, painful joints, crack in teeth, depression, and frequent infections. For the prevention, regular consumption of vitamin A rich foods such as animal products, orange and yellow fruits, and dark green leafy vegetables. The iron deficiency anemia is a condition in red blood cell count where hemoglobin is less than normal. Anemia results in retarded physical growth, low resistance to infections, and slow developmental learning ability. For the signs and symptoms of iron deficiency anemia, we have anemia, weakness, fatigue, pale appearance, reduced attention span, developmental delays in children. And to prevent this deficiency, we must take foods such as dark green leafy vegetables, legumes, red meats rich in iron, and iron fortified foods. Let's now go on to the iodine deficiency disorder. It results from lack of iodine in the diet, wherein iodine is needed for the production of thyroid hormone. For the prevention, we must take iodine-rich foods like bread, iodized salt, cheese, saltwater fish, cow's milk, seaweed, egg shellfish, soy milk, soy sauce, and ice cream. Now, down to our last topic, which is the eating disorders. Eating disorders is an extreme, unsafe eating behavior that can cause serious illness or that may even result in death. Having a healthy body weight is very desirable. But for some people, social pressure to get thin or maybe Muscular may lead to negative body image and unhealthy relation with food. Here are the warning signs and symptoms, prevention and control of eating disorders. The first eating disorder we have is the anorexia nervosa. Anorexia nervosa is an eating disorder wherein individuals, usually female, starve themselves, leading them to a far below the healthy weight. They are also characterized by an obsessive desire to lose weight by refusing to eat. They have an intense fear of gaining weight and a distorted perception of weight. People with anorexia place a high value on controlling their weight and shape using extreme efforts that tend to significantly interfere with their lives. The warning signs and symptoms of anorexia are dry skin, fainting, brittle hair, dehydration, loss of body fats, and irregular heartbeat. For the prevention, Early treatment is the best way to prevent the disorder. And that early treatment is knowing the early signs. For the second eating disorder, we have the bulimia nervosa. It is a frequent eating of very large amount of food followed by purging, such as self-induced vomiting, to undo the effects of stuff eating. It is a serious, potential, life-threatening disorder. To get rid of the calories and prevent weight gain, people with bulimia may use different methods. For example, you may regularly self-induce vomiting or misuse laxatives, weight loss supplements, diuretics, or enemas after binging. Or you may use the other ways to read yourself of calories and prevent weight gain such as fasting, 
strict dieting, or excessive exercise. For the warning signs of bulimia nervosa, we have damaged heart due to starvation, damaged kidney due to the laxative abuse, dehydration, and serious malnutrition, and large stomach, tooth, enamel injury, sores in the mouth, and throats are often red. To prevent bulimia nervosa, we must avoid skipping meals, eat high-fiber foods, include fresh fruits and vegetables in the diet, drink 8 to 10 glasses of water a day, avoid finger foods, and eat regularly. The third eating disorder was binge eating disorder. It is a compulsive overeating in which a person eats huge amounts of food without control usually done by the depressed stressed or nervous people instead of expressing their feelings binge eating disorder is a serious eating disorder in which you frequently consume unusual large amounts of food and feel unable to stop eating almost everyone overeats in occasion such as having seconds or thirds of a holiday meal but for some people excessive overeating that feels out of uh, control and becomes a regular occurrence crosses the line to binge eating disorder when you have the binge eating disorder you may be embarrassed about overeating and vow to stop but you feel such a compulsion that you can't resist the urges and continue binge eating. For the warning signs of binge eating, we have lack of control, depression, grief, anxiety, shame, and disgust of self-hatred. To prevent this binge eating disorder, we must learn to manage stress. We must eat three regular meals, stop dieting, avoid dullness or boredom, do some exercise, have enough sleep, and get help. Always remember that eat for your health and nutrition. Have a balanced diet. Build a solid support network. A healthy diet has a lot of benefits. It can prevent certain health conditions like heart diseases, cancer, and it can lower your cholesterol. It can also help you lose weight or stay at a healthy weight. The choices you make about what you eat and drink matter. They should add up to a balanced and nutritious diet. It is important to be nutritionally healthy at all times. Most especially in this time of pandemic. During the times of stress and uncertainty, it can be easy to fall into bad habits. Neglecting already established healthy routines. Maintaining a healthy lifestyle supports your mind and body, making you better equipped to deal with the difficulties posed by the coronavirus pandemic. Let's see if you have gained something from today's discussion by a short activity. Just comment down the letter of the correct answer. Number one, your classmate is anorexic. How are you going to help him or her? Five seconds starts now. And the answer is letter D. Number two. Why do adolescents require more energy and nutrients? Five seconds starts now. And the answer is letter B. Number three. To stay a healthy weight, one should choose a healthful diet with 5 seconds starts now. And the answer is B. For your assignment, do activities number 1, 2, and 3 on your health module to be checked on your follow-up discussion with your math teacher. Before we end, I would like to leave a message. The doctor of the future will no longer treat the human frame with drugs, 
but rather will curb and prevent disease with nutrition. From Thomas Edison. Thank you for spending your precious time with me. Again, I am your nurse, Marie Antoinette Ganalon Soriano from DVB NHS, signing off. Goodbye and take care.